Hello, hello. We are here for the 16th edition of the Script Talks. And I'm really pleased to introduce Atlas Arman from the Kima Network team. Atlas, are you there? Yes, I were. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I'm here and it is my pleasure to, you know, uh, to be here with the Script Network team and the community. It is our pleasure as, you know, Kima Finance team. Yeah, amazing. Thank you for being here. Uh, so, uh, I know about the Kima Network for some time uh, already, but can you tell us a little bit more to our audience? Uh, what is Kima Network and what do you do? Uh, it is my pleasure. Yes, sure, of course. So, Kima, uh, Kima Network, uh, also known as Kima Finance, is the cross-chain uh, money transfer protocol and uh, which actually enables seamless and secure uh, interoperability without any s smart contracts. So we provide this interoperability and the cross-chain payment settlement uh, not only, uh, you know, uh, within, within the, you know, chains, the different chains, also we ensure the same seamless interoperability between Web2 institutions uh, and with you know web three ones at the same time. Gotcha. Uh, and can you tell us like how do you do it without uh, contracts? It's it's like really interesting to be in the blockchain space and you handle everything without the contracts. Exactly. So this is actually very important concept. So Kima uh, Finance actually has. Uh, brought this to the market as a you know breakthrough solution to the existing barriers, uh, existing risks uh, that we have been experiencing. Uh, you know, a very um, recent example has happened to Lefi. You know, Lefi hacked, and also yesterday, uh, Reddit Capital has hacked. So the you know the the news has hit the market. Uh, 50 million dollar has stolen. So this is a huge risk in the market in the in the web tree, and uh, these risks and this hacking, you know, uh, incidences has been, uh, you know, being resulted from the smart contract itself because smart contracts, uh, you know, is being coded by a man and can be hacked by another. So this is a very huge. Uh, risk that uh, you know whenever we bridge uh, you know our assets from our wallets to uh, you know when we connect to another platform which you know promise us to you know bridging our assets and changing it wrapping it with another assets so this actually appears always with the risk right so you can lose your money and uh, you know, very well-known and popular, uh, you, you know, platforms uh, can ex can <clears throat> experience this. This is a fact. So, um, in order to overcome this, actually, Kima has uh, you know brought an innovative approach to this uh, bridging thing. So, actually, Kima works like a layer one chain. Um, with no TVL, with no smart contracts, with no users, the pure aim and the, the pure function is uh, actually um, brings the interoperability and the, you know cross-chain uh, asset transfer for all the chains and for and between Web two and Web three institutions. So how we can do this is without smart contract. This is the most important point because Kima's differentiation from the other interoperability or cross-chain, uh, you know, uh, protocols is is that we, you know, can achieve this in a very, you know, um, quick and fast manner without s s smart contracts. So, in order to explain, let me just give me give give an, you know, let me just give an example. Um, so. Um, for example, um, you know, you would like to uh, transfer uh, your assets, let's say uh, 100 USDC from your Solana wallet to uh, my Tron wallet, for example, or Avalanche wallet, or my Bitcoin wallet, or, you know, my BNB wallet, 
these can all be possible with with uh, you know um, Kima. Um, we take um, 100 USDC from your Solana wallet. We accept this into our um, a layer. All the validators uh, approve this, sees that the money and the fund, uh, you know, physically has been received. And the same validators, and at the same time, um, uh, there is also another um, actually um, approval mechanism coming from the CPU core, which also release the transaction uh, from uh, you know the, uh, another liquidity pool on Tron to my <laughs> Tron wallet. So and this actually you know this um, the transaction happens in a matter of second without no smart contracts. So our layer accepts your uh, again uh, accept your you know USDC on Solana wallet. Validators approve that the money and the fund and the asset, let's say, has been received. And the same validators and the CPU core <coughs> release 100 USDC from the Tron liquidity pool to my Tron wallet. So this happens in a matter of second without any smart contract in a very secure way. So we can, you know, do this transfer, not only the, you know, stable coins, UCDC, UCDT, but also we can enable cross-chain, you know, messagings or other cross-chain assets, uh, you know, transfer, we can, we can achieve this through the same mechanism. So th this is actually how it, how it works. Mm. And this is how it is so secure. Mm. This sounds really interesting. I, I'm not all that aware, but uh, is there some kind of a competition out there on the market that is offering some kind of similar solutions, or are you unique uh, kind of provider of these kind of services? Um, out there in the market, there are you know bridging solutions which uses smart contracts. They uh, they uh, also can do you know cross chain. Um, uh, interoperability and, uh, you know, they are bridging it using smart contracts. From, you know, what Kima can achieve, this is unique for Kima at the moment. So Kima uh, is the only protocol on earth, actually, which uh, facilitates this interoperability, for example, from Web2 institutions to Web3 institutions with just one simple API and SDK. There is no other. Uh, so um, this cross-chain payments settlement is not only you know uh, valid and you know possible among the and the between the chains. We can also provide this you know uh, liquidity management and uh, you know cross-chain asset uh, transfer from your bank account to your wallet or from from um, your wallet to you know. Uh, you know, um, to another Web2, maybe institutions. Um, so from that perspective, Kima is unique and has brought a, a very unique solution to the market, mm. which brings a true interoperability. Mm, cool. And uh, let's talk uh, further about the use cases, because I find it really interesting. Um, while I was doing a research, I saw a couple of examples on your website where you were mentioning some kind of uh, use cases about uh, AWA, atomic swamps, uh, DeFi lending, uh, wallets, and similar. C can you tell us a little bit more about it? How, how can users uh, use Kima on on daily basis? Mm, of course. So, for example, um, you may use or you you would like to play a you know a GameFi project which is on Solana, and it it actually. Uh, makes you and you have to, you know, uh, bridge your BNB assets uh, into Solana uh, through a third-party platform which uses uh, smart contracts. And this brings you uh, a really huge hassle, overburden and a risk. Uh, instead of taking all of these risks and take, uh, you know, uh, waste your time, you can easily connect your wallet and, you know, bring your BNB assets uh, into the Solana-based uh, GameFi platform. So this interoperability, for example, actually um, make the you know 
life of the players, gamers, very easy to, you know, uh, connect their assets, play their games without, you know, ha- being, you know, uh, have to just um, bridging their assets. So th- this may be a one usage model. The o- other usage model is um, DDP. Uh, actually, we can enable also through the same uh, interpretable to layer, we enable users uh, to invest um, and use their cryptocurrencies in order to invest uh, in the real world assets through uh, atomic s- swaps. Uh, so again, we 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 actually provide the infrastructure for platforms or for users or for peer to peer users not on, not uh, only to the uh, enterprises and the projects we enable them uh, for example two uh, peers let's say one can be seller the other can be you know um, uh, buyer they uh, come into the same platform and uh, put their assets on each side and we facilitate this atomic swap uh, without smart contracts again uh, without any middleman and enable them to you know uh, to transfer the assets uh, in a very s- secure way through atomic swap this may be another um, another u- usage model and maybe it can be also said that so everyone of us at the moment is you know web3 enthusiast we probably use some you know staking uh, or uh, farming platforms in order to grow our, you know, um, digital assets, right? Crypto assets. So, um, for example, in order to um, 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 use your or, you know, increase your Bitcoin assets, uh, which is idle on your uh, idle on your um, wallet, we can enable you to, you know, wrap these Bitcoins to the same interoperability layer without smart contracts, make them W Bitcoin, and you can uh, stake these W Bitcoins on any EVM based, you know, staking or farming protocol, right? So this also enables Bitcoin holders securely, you know, um, earning yields from their Bitcoin assets, for example. These are all uh, mm. different u- use cases, gotcha. the different mm. models. Yeah. That, Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Atlas. Uh, let's talk about uh, interoperability. Interoper- like, what have been the main issues that regarding the interoperability that Kima Network aims to solve? And how does its approach differ from existing solutions like token wrapping and cross-chain bridges. Uh, I know that you mentioned something from before, but can we go a little bit more in depth with it? Uh-huh. Of course. So um, the obstacles and bottlenecks uh, that we have in the market uh, actually is being experienced by the protocol itself uh, and also by users uh, it's, uh, themselves at the same time. When you approach the case from the you know protocols, so, um, uh, you know, most of the protocols is based on one or two or three different chains. They are building, they try to integrate, and this really needs so many efforts, time and money. And also, uh, they actually lose the other users from different ecosystems. For example, if you if you are a landing protocol which is based on a BNB chain or Arbitrum, um, really, so you just need to accept uh, the crypto assets from the same chain um, and uh, from, the, from, from one single or a couple of different ec- uh, ecosystems. So we enable uh, these protocols to uh, accept um, Assets, for example, stablecoin, utility, not only from their native, their, uh, you know, uh, chain, but also accept, uh, you know, different chains and different ecosystems. So without uh, letting them integrate in other chains through Kima API, they can start accepting, you know, different assets. For example, if you, if your protocol is built on Solana, 
So we enable you to accept USDC, USDT from, um, you know, Avalanche or Tron or uh, BNB chain. So by this way, you can grow your audience. You can you can grow your liquidity also. Um, you know, without uh, depending on just one si simple one single chain, and then you can. Uh, open the doors of different liquidity sources from different chains through Kima API because you can start accepting, you know, different assets from different verticals from different ecosystems. This is how it works from the, uh, you know, project and protocol perspective. When it comes to the user, so user, um, you know, uh, is afraid of uh, um, actually taking some overburden, taking risk of bridging their assets in order to benefit from some certain protocols uh, benefits. For example, if you are heavily using your, you know, BNB uh, chain wallet and you, the, all of your assets are under your, you know, BNB um, chain, so it is hard for you to, you know, change them and bridge them into the Solana assets in order to, you know, uh, benefit from Solana yield in on uh, on the Solana based protocol. Instead, you just connect your wallet. You can bring your USDT from BNB chain without, you know, thinking anything about if I'm I need to bridge it, if I I can lose my money, etc. With a very secure way, you can connect your uh, all your wallet and uh, you know bring your BNB assets into the Solana based. Uh, you know, um, um, lending protocol and you can make your money without, you know, experiencing any obstacle or, or any uh, interoperability e issue. So, um, this is how it works. And so instead of uh, going, so what actually, uh, Kima brings to both protocol and to the user is, so you don't have to go any other third party to bridge your assets. Instead, you can solve all the interoperability uh, needs just within one simple protocol, right? So without going and changing your asset from, you know, uh, bridging your asset from a third party and come back to the uh, landing protocol. It is all, you know, uh, bring risks. So can actually overcome all of these um, risks and bring it, you know, complete interoperability for the protocols to the projects, dApps, any kind of dApps. It may be a GameFi, it can be a, you know, DeFi, it can be a marketplace. Um, so yeah, this is how how, mm, how it works gotcha. actually gotcha. Um, from technology perspective. Uh, Let's let's talk about liquidity management. Uh, so, how does uh, Kima Finance uh, plans to optimize liquidity management across different blockchains, and what kind of mechanisms are in place to ensure that liquidity is available where is needed at most, like at certain points in time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is a very important question. So, when it comes to liquidity. Even uh, not only DApps, uh, proto uh, the you know uh, DeFi protocols, but also chains itself suffer from the lack of um, liquidity. Um, actually, Kima, uh, with, you know, using the Kima's API, um, both the chains and the DApps uh, can have access to the you know um, yeah. different the different assets. Uh, and the liquidities from all, all, all from the other chains. For example, you are, um, you know, you create and you build your uh, DAP on, uh, for example, uh, Arbitrum, and it also affects both your uh, chains, your DAP's liquidity, and also the chain liquidity. And you uh, start talking and attracting uh, users and liquidity from. Uh, arbitrum ecosystem, so it is limited. So instead, with using the Kima interoperability, you know, of, uh, technology and uh, using our API, you can start talking about and advertising and you know, of, uh, um, calling the, the, the you know holders from different ecosystems, different chains to you know. Of, um, uh, bringing their assets on your platform. So what happens is 
So not you not only collect you know liquidity within the arbitrum ecosystem, so you can start collecting and attracting users from, for example, Solana ecosystem, from Tron ecosystem, from Avalanche ecosystem. So we support more than ten different chains, and the, the supported chains is the number of chains is, is growing. So that means you can attract funds and liquidity from more than uh, 10 different top tier, you know, chains into your DAP protocol and at the same time to your chain as well. So this is how you can increase your liquidity and overcome the uh, liquidity fragmentation uh, through Kima. This is how it works. Mm, gotcha. So um, Kima is launching really soon, I think. And uh, c can we talk a little bit about the upcoming launch? Uh, what are your plans for the launch pads, for the exchanges? When do you plan to launch, uh, etc.? Uh, thank you for the uh, a question. Actually, this is pretty uh, important. So we are all observing the market. So the market uh, at the moment fluctuates um, pretty um, fast, quickly, and we are observing uh, for the positive trend. So, uh, Kima has been very well positioned in the market. So, uh, our um, mainnet is already ready. So, from the technology perspective, from the ecosystem perspective, and the uh, prospects, and you know the projects that. Uh, have been using the Kima API. So from all of this perspective, we are pretty strong. Um, so we have uh, more than 40 different uh, partners who are at the moment integrating Kima API. So this is a cool and great news. And at the same time, two, uh, more than 200 is waiting in our pipeline. So it is a solid, you know, you know, pipeline for such a kind of, you know, uh, pretty G project. So we are pretty strong from the fundraise perspective. As you know, we have been oversubscribed from all the rounds and allocations. So what should we do is we need to ensure our investors um, will really um, get you know, highest ROI possible. So also this is not depending on what we are doing, also how the market is doing. So from our, our end, we have been doing great really. So we are pretty ready uh, for our launches, our IDOs and the listing. We are going to be listed at, you know, top tier exchanges, uh, you know, uh, you know the names who are the, you know, top ones. And uh, we are actually waiting for the right time at the moment. So we are not in rush. We are, we, we should take our time for our investors because we need to care, uh, and take care of our investors, our communities, uh, you know, wealth. This is our number one priority. Uh, so we are, you know, waiting for the right time. So our TGE is expected to, you know, be conducted, uh, on the, uh, by the end of October or early November, according to the market conditions. Our ideals will be also uh, done uh, in the top tier launch pads and our partners like ChainGPT, uh, who have been incubating us also, and also the Polka starter kind of you know, top tier ones. Please follow our Twitter, official Twitter account, so you will uh, get the you know dates exactly. That may change because of the you know market conditions. Uh, as I mentioned, everything is on track. We are pretty solid projects with you know huge backers with a solid uh, product um, you know readily available at the moment. Working and integrating with more than forty different uh, projects, uh, they are utilizing our uh, cross-chain payment settlement. They are. Um, Utilizing our on and off ramp solutions and cross chain messaging protocol and at the same time DVP at the moment. We are closely working with the, uh, you know, our ecosystem partners. This is our number one priority. Then, uh, we are going to announce, uh, the, uh, you know, um, the TGE time on our socials soon. As I mentioned, uh, it, it will be uh, by the end of October. Uh, or early November, according to the market conditions, we are waiting for the positive trend, and then we are going to launch, and our investors will be uh, happy.
Amazing. I think it's a good plan to to wait for the perfect uh, market conditions. But it's been tricky. We have to admit it's been really tricky for the last couple of months for the new project. Exactly. Yeah. E- exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and for the last question for today, uh, I think uh, our listeners, they would like to know what are going to be the plans for the Kima Finance in the next 12 months? So basically, what kind of check marks are there on your roadmap? after you launch the the coin yes so um by the coin launch we are going to announce uh, our main uh, main net launch so these uh, will follow each other so just after the um, uh, lo- uh, after the tge uh, another big uh, news will hit the market about our main net launch which meaning uh, so uh, our integrated partners will s- s- switch from testnet to mainnet which actually make kima uh, you know make um, real money and uh, uh, get a, you know huge revenue stream and also we are working with uh, some governments and banks we are going to announce uh, you know news about uh, you know uh, interoperability solution from web two institutions like banks and governments, which you know we are going to connect them to the web three space. These uh, names will hit the market again, uh, which provides a huge um, interest from the um, ventures for our next uh, fund fundraise uh, series A for the series B. So and all of these occasions will actually foster the Kima token usage because every transaction that Kima facilitates through the um, Web2 to Web3 institutions and among the Web3 you know chains uh, will be needing the Kima token. So a Kima token will be needed, will be used uh, in a very you know heavily manner uh, in the upcoming year and years to you know um, make our community and make our holders uh, very happy at the at at, at the end so and this is a um, recurrent business it is not one time off Uh, when uh, you know our partners integrate kima that means so they are using this technology long term for years so it will be a huge business for for us, for our token holders and the ecosystem players. Amazing! Sounds sounds really exciting. The future uh, in front of the Kima Finance. So, um, at last, thank you for for today for being here with us on the 16th edition of the Script Talks. Uh, it has been really amazing. We learned a lot about Kima, and we wish you all the luck with the upcoming lunch and more. Thank you very much. We really love Script Network. Uh, as are you know one of the most important ecosystem players you guys uh, have been doing great uh, you are also you know bring a very innovative approach to the ecosystem you know connecting the media industry with the blockchain which is also a very breakthrough uh, thinking and vision uh, yeah we are going to do this together yeah thank you very much for you know having us yeah thank you atlas have a good one and listeners will be here on yes, the next week So, see you there. Have a good one. Bye-bye. See you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.